going to spend a few moments now looking at the position of dative and accusative objects in the German sentence. Um, we'll see that whenever we use uh, a dative object and an accusative object, object together in a sentence, there's going to be a specific word order depending upon whether one or both or one or the other uh, nouns that are used, if they are actually replaced by pronouns. Um, and then in the conclusion, I'm going to look at some verbs that take dative in the German. Now, I'm not going to begin this presentation with, a, with an example in English because there really is no similar uh, pattern in the English language. This is something that is unique to German. Um, and then with the conclusion, with the verbs taking dative, I'm just going to go through a list of verbs that take the dative, uh, by no means a complete list. Um, this is something you're just going to have to memorize, but there is sort of a pattern or a logic to it that I'm going to try to explain. So let's begin by taking a look at the dative and accusative objects in a German sentence. Now, what we have on the screen, uh, on the screen is a simple German sentence, Ich zeige meinem Bruder das Buch. I'm showing to my brother the book. We have a subject, uh, the person performing the action in the sentence, ich, in the nominative case. We have a verb in the first person singular, which is in the second position, ich zeige. And then we have the thing that is being shown, that receives the action of being shown, and that is the book. So that's going to be the accusative case. Now the brother is in there, and he's one that's benefiting from this action indirectly. He's uh, the person to whom the book is being shown. Therefore, he's going to be in the dative case. Now, the thing that I want to point out here is, and that we're going to be looking at over the next four slides, is the uh, the two nouns in the sentence, meinem Bruder and das Buch, my brother in the book. Um, when the first rule of thumb is that whenever I have a dative and an accusative object in the sentence. I'm going to put the dative as close as I possibly can to the main verb if both the dative and the accusative are in their noun form. And what I mean by in their noun form is that they are not replaced by a pronoun, like a he, a she, or an it. Here I have my brother. My brother is a complete unpack, uh, unpackaged noun. Uh, same thing with book. Uh, so whenever I use two nouns in a sentence, and one is dative and one is accusative, I'm going to take the dative and put it as close as I can to the verb. Now, in German what we can do is we can replace nouns with pronouns, depending upon the gender of the noun. So brother is der, so it's going to be masculine, Buch is das, so it's going to be neuter. Um, what happens if I replace one of these nouns with a pronoun? For instance, let's take a look at next slide. I show it to my brother. Ich zeige es meinem Bruder. Now, you'll notice here that es, which refers in the prior slide to book, es being a neuter personal pronoun, it is suddenly in the position where the dative object used to be. That is immediately after the verb. So a rule of thumb, the second rule of thumb is if one of those nouns is replaced by a pronoun, I'm going to take that pronoun and move it as close as I can to the verb in question. In this instance, it just happens to be the accusative pronoun, S, which replaces das Buch. Ich zeige es meinem Bruder. Now, what I could also do is, let's say, uh, I know we're talking about my brother, so I want to replace him with the personal pronoun and leave the book, das Buch, sort of unpackaged in its complete noun form. So if that's the instance, I, what we get is what we see in the next slide, ich zeige ihm das Buch. But nevertheless, the same rule still pertains. If one of those nouns is replaced by a pronoun, it could be the accusative object, it could be the dative object, doesn't matter. 
that pronoun is going to be as close to the verb as possible. Now, the final question that you probably see where this is going is, well, what if both of them are replaced with a personal pronoun? In that case, what we get is, in the following slide, ich zeige es ihm. I show it to him. The, what we want in this case is if both of them are replaced, if both nouns are replaced of pronouns, we are going to get the accusative pronoun as close to the verb as possible, followed thereupon by the dative pronoun, im, to my brother. I show it to him. Now this is the exact opposite of what we have when we have uh, two nouns, two complete unpackaged nouns that are used in a sentence. You remember that in the first slide that we saw, uh, ich zeige meinem Bruder das Buch. We had, if both nouns are used, the dative before the accusative, whereas if two personal pronouns are used, we have the accusative before the dative. And the other, the third rule is if one of those is replaced by a pronoun, then the pronoun comes first. So actually, even though you're thinking, oh, there's a lot of flip-flopping around, you know, uh, I don't know what comes first, what comes second, um, it's actually really simple. If two nouns are in a sentence, data first. If two pronouns are in a sentence, accusative first. And if one of the, if we have one pronoun in the sentence, that's automatically going to come first. So. And this sort of settles the, the problem we have of uh, the position of dative and accusative objects at the same time in the German sentence. Now, what I want to do now and to conclude this uh, presentation is to look at a list of verbs in German that take a, uh, that take a dative object. And this is by no means a complete list. And I'm going to walk through and just sort of explain kind of, I guess, the logic, the reasoning uh, behind it. So, antworten, to answer. Um, antworten Sie mir. What you're really saying is, give to me an answer. So, with this to, give to me, you're giving someone something. This automatically requires a direct object and indirect object, a dative and accusative. Same thing with danken, to thank. Ich danke dir. I give thanks to you. Next one, fehlen, to be missing, is maybe a little more of a stretch, but it still works. S uh, was fehlt dir? What's missing to you? Or what's, uh, with regard to you, what is missing? Um, folgen, to follow. Bitte folgen Sie mir. Please follow me. Um, maybe a little bit more of a stretch. Uh, to follow, to give follow to, to give chase to. Um, Next one, gefallen, to please, to satisfy. Dein Hemd gefällt mir. Your shirt is pleasing to me. Um, the next one, gehören, to belong. Das Buch gehört mir. The book belongs to me. Um, glauben, to believe. Er glaubt mir nicht. He doesn't believe me. He gives no belief to me. He gives me no credence. Um, helfe, helfen, to help. Ich kann dir leider nicht helfen. I can't unfortunately help you. I can give no help to you. Uh, passieren, to happen, to occur, to occur. Was ist dir passiert? What happened to you? Uh, raten, to advise. Ich rate dir davon ab. I advise you against it. I give you advice not to do it. Verzeihen, to excuse, to forgive. Uh, ich kann ihm nicht verzeihen. I can't excuse him. I can't forgive him. I can give no forgiveness to him. Uh, weh tun, to hurt. Wo tut es Ihnen weh? Where does it hurt you? That's what you would say, I guess, if you have a, go to a doctor's office and the doctor asks you a question. Uh, wo tut es Ihnen weh? Where do you hurt? Where does it do hurt to you? So, most of these instances, you sort of think of... Uh, the data as a uh, can answer the question to whom. Um, so, all right. So, verbs with the dative object and the position of accusative and dative in a German sentence.